In this video, I am going to provide you with a couple of problems I've had with this and along with a solution on how to figure out the difference between the wall framing height that you're going to deal with if you build a roof like this one with two different pitches so that the fascia board will line up with the roof rafters for the sheathing and line up at the corners here and work out as close to perfect as possible. So let's go ahead and jump into this. On this side here we have a 4 and 12 roof pitch with a 1 inch deep seat cut and again this can be confusing. So what I have here is the fascia board lining up with the 4 and 12 roof pitch and a 2 foot overhang measuring from the face of the framing wall stud to over the outside of the fascia board. And again a 1 inch seat cut 6 and 12 roof pitch and of course in this illustration you can see where the problem is right here. So what we will need to do to fix this will be to raise the height of this side or lower the height of this side and hopefully that makes sense. So again the fascia board is level here and joining the roof rafter at this point here even though in reality it will drop a little lower so that the roof sheathing will continue down straight. Now let's go ahead and show you how I would figure out the height difference in the wall framing. So let's go ahead and start with a cutaway view of the area we're going to be working with. This point here will represent the top of the fascia board and this point here will represent the top of the 4 and 12 roof pitch at the wall and this point here will represent represent the top of the 6 and 12 roof pitch and of course here is the difference in the height and even though I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, uh, for those of you who don't know how to figure out the height of a 4 and 12 roof pitch or how we arrived at these numbers, for every 1 foot or 12 inches we come in, this would represent the 12 and the 4 and 12. For example, for every 12 inches horizontally we go, we're going to come up 4 inches vertically. So if we were going to go 24 inches or 2 foot horizontally, we're going Going to come up 8 inches in vertical rise for our 4 and 12 roof pitch and the same for our 6 and 12. If we come in a foot we're going to go up 6 inches. We come in 2 feet we're going to go up 12 inches. So not too difficult. We're going to figure out the amount of vertical rise for each the 6 and the 4 and 12 and then simply subtract the difference to get our number. Now let me provide you with one more example and in this one I'm going to go Go ahead and break out the calculator to provide you with how we're going to convert this into a decimal and to do that you're just simply going to take and divide that number into 12 which would represent how many inches there would be in a foot and that would be 0.33 and I always recommend going back three numbers however for a distance this small you can probably just use two numbers so let's go ahead and clear this 1.333 and we're simply going to multiply this by 4 which would be the number in our 4 and 12 roof pitch and that would be 5.332 or 5.33 or about 5 and 5 sixteenths, just a little over a quarter of an inch. And then we will do the same for this. So we have 1.33 times 6 equals basically 8 inches. And then if we subtract the difference, I believe it was 5.33 we're going to get 2 and 5 eighths inches basically or 2.65 will be the difference in the wall framing heights if the overhang is going to be 16 inches and going to be for a 4 and 12 and a 6 and 12 roof pitch. And if that makes sense, let's go ahead and move on to the next problem that I ran into. And that, of course, will be the one inch seat cut that might provide you with an illusion that this number right here is going to be the same as the one on the other side, when in reality it will not be. And for those of you who didn't quite catch the difference, we have about three eighths of an inch difference, four and three quarters and five and an eighth. And if you remember, we 
we needed to raise the wall four inches, which if we did that would create a problem here. Remember, we're coming off of this point in our example. And of course, this is also going to create another problem. And these are the two problems that I have ran into in the past that took me hours to figure out. They were very confusing to me. And I hope in this process I'm not confusing you, but I wanted to cover the problems that I had. So if in reality I needed to go up four inches, but I have a three eighths of an inch difference in the seat cut height, that will allow this part of the roof rafter to be the same, then I'm only going to be raising this part of the wall up three and five eighths inches. However, if I do that, I'm still going to be off a little bit. But remember, we didn't originally have our fascia board in the right spot. And this will not be a problem if we lower the fascia board and put it where it needs to go. So again, to point out the two problems I had with this was that I was figuring the distance from here all the way over to here while measuring to this point here, which was what I was doing when I had the fascia board even with this point on the roof rafter. So again, this was a mathematical calculation and if you need more detail on it, feel free to let me know in the comment area because this was a big problem for me when doing this calculation calculation and the one inch seat cut without figuring the height from the top of the roof rafter to the top of the framing plate was also another problem that I ran into. So again, I hope I didn't make this too confusing because in reality, all you need to do is calculate the difference in the wall framing plate height, which we did in the two dimensional model and came up with four inches and then calculate this distance here on both of the roof pitches with the rafters you're going to use. Again, this is our critical measurement. And then we're going to be able to line up the fascia board where it needs to go for the roof sheathing to blend in perfectly on both sides. So even though something like this seems difficult, it's just like everything else in construction, once you get the general understanding of it, you're not going to have a problem figuring it out. So hopefully I took something here that is complicated and simplified it somehow. And if I did, or you simply enjoyed watching the video, make sure that you let us know in the comment area or hit the thumbs up button.